Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from EduraAdmission.com and today in this video we'll be talking about the continuation of our API testing with REST Sharp using C Sharp 11 and .NET 7 with Visual Studio 2022 in ARM based operating systems. So in this video we'll be talking about some of the questions which was raised in our earlier video like how we could run this test in the HTTPS authentication instead of just the non-secure HTTP website. And also there was a question like how we could able to run this test in Instead of launching the application from the command line rather in memory is there any option for that because there are some cases where we might require the application to be spinned up during the test execution not before the test execution actually happens so if those are some of the questions that you really have then this video is for you so let's start discussing about that one by one in this video we are going to do a bit of refactoring in this video like how we could able to enhance the coding that we have already written in our earlier video and also we will see how we can run this test in memory and also how we can run this test using an https uh, certificate website so let's see all this thing in action. So the moment, if you can see here, if I try putting HTTPS and if I try running our existing test that we ran before, so let me run this test. I think this test is gonna even fail with some other reason, being the application is not launched. So let me try running this application first, which is the .NET run. And then if I try running this test, You'll notice that we are getting an error here. It says that the SSL connection could not be established. See the inner exception. And it says that uh, the security authentication exception is actually happening. So how do we actually get around this particular problem? And this was one of the question which was uh, in the comment in our earlier video as well. And I have also answered that uh, in the comment. But the way that we can resolve this is by allowing the non-secured website. So there is an option called as remote certificate validation callback. So if we uh, use this particular property over here, we can actually set all the parameter and then we can set the value as true over here. So if we do this, the callback to be true, so this is basically a callback that we are setting the default a delegate method over here, like an anonymous method that we're creating, and then we are setting the value to true. So this is the way that we can do in C Sharp very easily. And once we do that, and once we try running this test, you will notice that the test is going to fail. The reason why it's actually failing is because if we just go to our website over here, in the last setting, the site should actually be HTTPS instead of HTTP. Now let me also try running the application once again. So while I do that, you will notice that the application is saying that there is no certificate for the HTTPS. Let me also try doing that, the .NET dev cert of HTTPS. So basically, even though we change our website as HTTPS, just by changing the URL of the launch settings to um, the HTTP to HTTPS, it doesn't mean that our site is now secured. We have to also install the certificate within our um, Windows machine. So the way we can do it is by just calling this .NET dev cert of HTTPS. So once we do that, you will notice that our certificate is going to be registered. And now if I try running this test, hopefully this time the test is going to pass, uh, but the application is not running. Let me run that. And you see that we don't really get any exception and it is running in HTTPS right now. Let me run that. And you will see that the test has got passed. So this is the way that we can actually run our test in a secured socket layer website, which is the HTTPS uh, certificate website instead of the non-secure HTTP website. That is one way of doing it in the REST Sharp world. And the other question is, how do we refactor this code in a much simpler fashion? I mean, there are many different ways that we can refactor this code, like using builder patterns or even more dependency injection way. Those things we not cover in this particular video, but we have already covered all those videos in our course, API testing with REST app, like a framework development in Udemy. You can go ahead and watch there. But in this particular video, this video is exclusively like how you can do some simple refactoring and how also you can run the test in the in-memory application, something like that. So the way we can refactor this code is by actually writing a simple driver. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna add a, class file over here. I'm gonna call this as rest sharp driver. And this rest sharp driver is gonna hold a client, which is gonna be the uh, rest client. So I'm gonna make a prop of the 
rest client which is going to be the rest client that we have got and then i'm going to create a constructor i'm going to copy some of the code that we have already written which is on this test over here as you can see this is the rest client which has been created so i'm going to copy that i'm going to paste it over here but instead of this rest client i'm going to use this rest client that i have created as a property there and once we have this i think we're pretty good to go over here and i'm also going to do one more thing in this particular code so if i just go back to our code over here so we can actually reduce this authentication that we are trying to do most of the time which is this one right because every time with our uh, request it can be a get product or get uh, the product by its name or get all the products we definitely require authentication token so without authentication token the code is not going to work right because all the api controller that we have got hopefully the application is running or maybe not so let's see oh yeah because it's https right now you can see that we have many different controllers here like get component by product id get product uh, component by product id create component and similarly get products all these controllers that you are seeing over here actually requires the authentication which is the bearer token so because this authentication token is going to be something used across all the controllers and requests the better way of refactoring this code is to put in a very very reusable coding fashion which is something that we can do something using public void create token something like that uh, and in fact we can also return the token here so which is going to be a string type so let me do that and i'm going to go back to our test code which is the unit test one and let me cut this particular piece of code that you are seeing over here and i can paste it here and then i can just return this particular token something like this and this rest client is nothing but the property that we created which is this guy right so now we have this create token method and i could probably do a two string so that things will be more happier and we have this token and now i can pass this token for the authentication now once authentication is done but before that because we have created this in a separate class file which is the rest sharp driver over here we need to create an instance of this rest sharp driver to call these actions first and then call the create token method so we have to do two things right now so in this refactoring what we have did is we have cut this code that we have written from here from this particular test one into a generic rest sharp driver and similarly we have moved the uh, token creation into another method which is the create token method over here so we have actually refactored quite well and now we have to start using this rest sharp driver and the way we can do it is using the instance creation in x unit which is nothing but the i class fixture where we can pass the rest sharp driver so i'm gonna use this rest sharp driver uh, something like this and this rest sharp driver we now can be instantiated by creating a constructor here and i'm gonna say rest sharp driver of rest sharp driver and i'm gonna create a property uh sorry not a property i'm gonna create a field which is the private read only field from where i can actually uh, call the rest client to get its product uh something like this and similarly the rest are dot create token something like that so you will now notice that we actually have got the uh, token creation available in our rest sharp driver method uh, in the rest sharp driver class and then we also call the property the rest client property to perform the get operation or post operation or whatever operation in future we are going to do we could be able to do that so this is the get product and let's say if you're going to be dealing with uh, some other operation let's say get products um, then you can just say get products here as an uh, endpoint you can still use the same authorization so you don't really have to create one more time like copy pasting the code and only thing you have to do is it's going to be getting the list of all the products so we can say 
the list of product and then you get the product and because it's going to be the list of product you're going to do like first or whatever uh, to get the name so this is going to be the get products so you get the product get the products something like that hopefully the endpoints name are correct yeah this is correct so we can run these two tests right now so we have refactored quite pretty well pretty faster right so let's say if i try running this test right now and you can see that both the test has got completed and they have got passed so this is the way that we could refactor our code quite well using the very very simple rest sharp driver class file that i have created over here and the last option is probably even more advanced which i have already covered in my course pretty well but i'm just going to give you a way that we could able to do that in the rest uh, sharp using the c sharp dot net world the asp.net and stuff is using the in-memory execution which is mostly used for integration testing not for the functional testing but i'm going to show you a glimpse of how you can actually use it so the way i'm going to do it is let's say if i go to my uh, terminal so if i just open where is my terminal here this one so let's say if i stop my uh, application running and then if i try running this test these tests are eventually going to fail because the application is currently not up and running so every time we have to make sure that the application should be running right so not to reduce that we are going to use this web application factory uh, library and that one you can actually go and add an dependency here which is called as mvc uh, dot testing and if you just search that so or maybe asp dot test something like that and this one the microsoft dot asp net core dot mvc dot testing so this is one of the most important library you know it also might be using this test host but i'm just going to use the uh, very simplest abstracted uh, library there and once we have this if i go to my test over here what i can do is i'm just going to do even more refactoring this time in the rest app driver where i'm going to introduce a um, generic startups over here and then i'm going to say web application factory which accepts a generic t startup as well where i'm going to say the t startup is nothing but a type of class so if i say this one what i'm essentially saying that i'm going to pass a startup class for you and just start that particular startup class for me while the um, while you want to create an instance of it and once i have that i can then go to my constructor over here and then i can say that i just get a client over here and then i'm going to create a new web application factory of that t startup that i have passed and then you create a default client for me so what i'm saying is you create a client for me over here using the startup class that i'm passing in and once you have this client you also need to ensure that you inject that particular client uh, for this particular uh, rest client if not the things are not going to work so i'm going to pass in over here so this is something i have did over here with a past experience that i have with my asp.net knowledge so if you really wanted to learn how the asp.net code has to be written and how the asp.net structures uh, used to happen those things i have covered in my course developing an asp.net application uh, in graphql in my udemy course as well as uh, it is also covered in the rest sharp course that i was talking about so you can go ahead and watch there but as you can see that we have did something over here let's see how the magic is going to happen so if i go back to my test over here it's going to complain me telling that hey i don't really understand this t startup what you are talking about so the t startup is nothing but the startup class file of my graphql.net application which has all the dependency injection to start the application itself this is where the application actually starts running in the asp.net world so i'm going to use that class file to be passed in over here something like this and then if i hit control dot you'll see that it's going to ask you do you need to add a reference to the graphql.net the visual studio id is smart enough to tell me that this is the class file that you're looking for and once i do that it is pretty happy right now but not only that we also need to add the type for the dependency injection over here 
and we're pretty good to go. And now let's try running the same code again. At this time, note that the application is actually not up and running. And now I'm gonna run this test and see what is gonna basically happen. And once I try running this test, you'll notice that both the test has got passed. And most importantly, the test actually is running in memory this time. So the performance of these tests are gonna be more faster than running in an actual application instance because this is actually running in memory. And also, just to note that if I even remove the remote certificate thingy right now, and if I try running this test, you will notice that the test is going to still pass because it doesn't worry about the remote uh, certificate validation stuffs because it is running in memory. It doesn't really involve the actual machine in here. So that's it. This is the way that we can run it in memory, refactor the code, and also handle the remote certificate validation callback errors which is happening before. That's it guys, once again, thank you so much for watching this video. And once again, if you really wanted to learn a lot more about writing the better API testing code, I always recommend you to watch my course, Rest Sharp course in Udemy, which has got a lot more detail covered than compared to what you can actually see in here, because this code that we are seeing over here is far lesser than what you can really achieve while building for a bigger enterprise grade once again, thank you so much for watching this video and you guys have a great day.